As heat flows into an object, its temperature changes depending on its specific heat and also its mass. So this is a uh, capital Q, the symbol for heat. Remember that heat has a unit of joules. Then we have uh, C, which is its specific heat. This is a table right here of specific heats in terms of joule per kilogram Celsius. I want to ask that you please use this on uh, problems that we do in class on the test on the worksheet. Okay, I'll be referring to this. This is simplified for you because it's already in kilograms, which is a standard uh, SI unit for mass and Celsius as well. Okay, which is a standard unit for temperature with SI. You're welcome. Um, so notice that it depends on a few things, right? This delta T is going to be the change in temperature. In other words, specific heat is not going to be an issue if something is at room temperature and there's no need to change its temperature at all. So this, uh, uh, this definition of heat is the heat required to change the temperature of a specific object that has a mass. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do an example. So here we have a 20 kilogram vat, which is a, a container that holds uh, another material. Uh, it's made of iron. So here we have iron right here at 448 joules per kilogram Celsius. How much heat input is needed to raise the temperature of the empty vat from 10 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius? Remember, the idea behind specific heat is specific heat is the ability to hold heat. Okay, so in this case, we have a, a vat made of iron that's going to hold heat. And how much heat is required to raise it from 10 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius. So looking at our formula for this, Q is equal to M, the mass, times the specific heat, times the change in the temperature. Well, it's a 20 kilogram vat. The specific heat for iron is 448. Don't forget your units. They cancel out really nicely. Joules per kilogram Celsius. And then the change in temperature is going to be 90 degrees Celsius minus a 10 degrees Celsius, which is 80 degrees Celsius, right? You, you're, you're subtracting those two. So Perfect. you have an 80 degrees Celsius difference. It's important that when we do these problems that we have our temperatures in Celsius. That way they cancel out. Notice how the units cancel out so nicely. The kilogram cancels out the kilogram. The Celsius cancels out the Celsius. Most impressive. We're left with a joule, which is the correct unit for heat. Now, if we were to go ahead and put this in the calculator, we're going to get uh, that the amount of heat necessary to raise this temperature from 10 to 90 degrees Celsius is going to be 716800 joules. That's all there is to it. Which is a rather large number, right? We could express that in terms of kilojoules if you would like, 716.8 kilojoules. Okay, quite a bit of energy, but nothing compared to what happens when we add water into the mix. So recall, remember this number, right? 716.800 joules. So what if we take this vat and we add water inside of it? We add 20 kilograms of water into this vat. Well, what's happening now is I have this. I have this. I have the heat required for the iron vat, and I have the heat required now for the water. Now, of course, we already found the heat required to raise the vat 80 degrees. That was 716800 joules. But what we need to find now is the heat required to raise the water by that much as well. So we have 20 kilograms of water. The specific heat of water is substantially higher. 4186 joules per kilogram Celsius. And of course, it's going from 10 degrees to 90 degrees, right? And so that's a total of 80 degrees Celsius difference. Once again, notice how effortlessly these units cancel out leaving you the joules. This whole term ends up becoming a rather large number. Six, six, nine, seven, six, zero, zero joules. 
And when I combine that with the, ener the heat required to heat the vat, we get a total of 7414400 joules. That is a lot. Could you say that, that again? That is a lot of again, joules. Please. And again, why is it that much heat? It's because water. Water has a higher specific heat. So uh, objects that have a higher specific heat are going to require more energy to go ahead and heat up. Recall that in this case, the vat was made of iron. That was also 20 kilograms, right? It was the same mass as the water. They Both of these items had the same mass. Both of these items were raised the same temperature from 10 degrees to 90 degrees. The only difference between these two mass, these two objects is that one was made of iron, one was made of water. Notice a huge difference in the amount of heat necessary to heat up these different items. Okay. Problem two. Well, notice that this is an interesting uh, number they gave us for Lake Erie. This is how much water it contains. This is volume of water. Recall from back in the day, uh, first set of notes, that if it's one dimensional, it's a line. If it's two dimensional, it's area. If it's three dimensional, it's volume. So this is a three dimensional uh, unit. This is volume of water. Okay. Now, how is it going to help us? Because if you recall, Q is equal to M times C times delta T. There was no V for volume in this equation. Most impressive. Well, Density is mass over volume. Should you know this? Maybe not, but I'm showing you now. You're welcome. <laughs> so the density of an object is equal to its mass divided by the volume. So if I solve for m, if I multiply both sides by v, I get that the mass is the volume times the density. This is the Greek letter rho, by the way. Could you say that again, again, please? And it represents density. Now, so the mass, our water mass is going to be the volume, which is 4.0 times 10 to the 11 meters cubed. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. The density has units of mass over volume. You'll notice that the meter cubes cancel out, leaving you with kilograms. Perfect. So by doing this quick calculation, we get that the mass of water for Lake Erie that we're dealing with is 4 times 10 to the 14 kilograms. There is no use in this problem writing out 14 zeros. It's a waste of time for you, and there's no room in the calculator. So you're going to need to be comfortable with using this scientific notation. Well, we're ready to go ahead and plug things in. Right, the mass is 4 times 10 to the 14 kilograms. The specific heat of water was 4186 uh, joules per kilogram Celsius. And then the temperature difference, look at the temperature difference, this is ridiculous. We're going from 11 degrees Celsius to 12 degrees Celsius. That's only a 1 degree. We're trying to heat up this lake by 1 degree. We're trying to heat up a lake by one degree, okay? Kilogram, kilogram, Celsius, Celsius. We're left with joules. The amount of heat needed to heat up th this lake by one degree is going to be 1.6744 times 10 to the 18 joules. A massive amount of joules. Now, of course, you think about reality. We're not going to heat this lake up, you know, with electricity or by, by manpower. It's going to be heated by the sun. So the sun does provide an enormous amount of energy to the earth that we take for granted. Okay. And it's responsible for heating lakes, natural bodies of water. Okay. So a couple of takeaways from here is make sure you're aware of what they give you, right? And in this case, if they give you the volume, right, you can go ahead and, and, and find the mass by recognizing that density is mass over volume. And the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. For this problem, we have a steel strut. Now, as if you look at your table, uh, steel doesn't is not listed on there, but steel is, tends to be associated with iron, okay? Yeah. Because iron is the main ingredient of steel. Steel is pretty much an alloy composite of different metals. 
and the predominant metal in steel production is iron. Okay, so we have a steel strut. It has it takes this much energy to operate. We want to find the change in temperature if this is the mass. So we begin with Q is equal to M times C times delta T. But we're solving for delta T. We want to get delta T by itself. So we divide both sides by the mass in a specific heat. Delta T is Q over M times C. Uh, the Q is 2.5 times 10 to the fifth joule. The mass is 1.57 kilograms. Joules per kilogram Celsius. This is a bit more complicated. I leave it to you, the viewer, to go ahead and, and double check on these units. These kilograms do cancel out. If you do the keep flip change, you're going to recognize that the joules cancel out and the Celsius ends up becoming in the ends up uh, showing up in the numerator. Okay. Uh, delta T. If I put this in the calculator, be careful with your parentheses. I got 355 degrees Celsius. Okay. This is quite a quite a big. Uh, change for your summary and don't be cheap take take some time right you're going to want to talk about that q equals m times c times delta t and explain how each part is going to affect it that's all there is to it